I'm going to go to this side soon so you don't have to be there bored. So someone over here, get ready for a question. Yes, sir. Hi. Thanks for uh, being here tonight. Really appreciate it. Seeing you before. I really enjoyed it. Quick question, uh, digital marketer, really moving toward marketing. So I'm glad you supported that statement earlier. Uh, one of my big concerns, though, or actually, I'll just leave it open-ended. What is going to happen to Amazon? Is it a 10-year run? So every time I've ever been in a room with Jeff Bezos, he's been the smartest person in the room. <laughs> and that counts Ted. So that's a pretty big deal. Um, the ratchet, which I haven't talked about yet, um, that he is building is, I think, pretty profound. One of the basic human needs ever since there has been stuff is to acquire stuff. And to think that one could corner the market on the process of acquiring stuff was so audacious that no one even expected he meant it. That he told Barnes & Noble what he was going to do, and then he did it. And then he announced to each one of the industries he was going into exactly what he's going to do, and he's done it because his ratchet is so powerful. So let me explain what I mean by a ratchet. Uh, if you go to the hardware store, you can buy a wrench that when you go this way, it puts in friction, but when you go this way, nothing happens. So it can only go one direction. So if you think about certain kinds of technology, Kevin Kelly has written about this, there are technology ratchets. If you get a smartphone, odds are the first week you only used it half an hour a day. But using it makes you use it more, which makes you use it more, which makes you use it more, and it ratchets in one direction. It turns out that when people move out of abject poverty and enter a middle class, there's a capitalist ratchet that goes into play because each person has just a little bit of spending money which enables them to engage with a merchant which gives them more spending money and the whole ratchet continues. So our goal if we're going to build something of substance is to say what's the ratchet that as this gets used it gets used more. And I think that what's profound about the seven businesses where Amazon is thriving is that most of them have a ratchet associated with so I don't own stock in any companies on purpose because I'm really bad at this, but it's hard for me to see when that ratchet breaks and how it breaks, but it's been absolutely stunning to watch. I think they haven't taken as much care with some of the innocent bystanders as they could, and I think that uh, in retrospect, they probably would do some of those things differently. I hope so. And that as AI starts entering this process and we start dealing with other countries and we start dealing with kids and we start dealing with how are we shading people's choices, I think their responsibilities are through the roof and they better own them to be good citizens. But from a business point of view, there's a ratchet going on there, just like Google search turned into a ratchet. Over on this side, three people. We'll go to the front row, then we'll go two rows back, and then we'll go to that gentleman in the back, right here. Oh, I'm sorry, was there someone else in the front row? We'll come back to you in a second. Yes. Me first. Go, go. Uh, thank you very much for what you said earlier about being generous. I, my original question was marrying my past, my corporate experience, with my entrepreneurial present. So I left my corporate job in 2004. I've struggled. I started a factory. This is too much background. Right, right. But, but I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to kind of marry both. And I think that the answer is to find selflessness or to be less selfish. Is that the answer to my question? To marry I think both? that's the answer to every question. Okay. But <laughs> instead of wondering <laughs> where your tools are going to come from, the question is, who are you seeking to change? What change are you trying to make? And it's a really simple question. Michael Schrag wrote an ebook about it. It's only 38 pages long or something. Who? Michael Schrag, okay, S-C-H-R-A-G-E from MIT. Every important entity, bureaucracy, marketer, institution, makes a change happen. What change are you seeking to make? The more profound the change, the more generous the change, the better. You can worry about all the other narrative part later. First, begin there. What do you see that's not working? Chickens in Ethiopia, people in Orange County who need a cell phone, something. What change are you trying to make? Start there. All right, Vincent, Thank tell you. us about your new Thank book. You. Where is it? Oh, that's not what you 
but I'm just giving you a little product placement here. Okay. Thank you. What's up? Thank you very much. Um, we have three boys. We homeschool, and we are traveling across the country right now as a family for a couple months. And we have carte blanche to teach how we want to teach. Right. What for you would be the most important things to teach? Yes. And what is not important to teach? In Stop Stealing Dreams, I wrote that, and I haven't changed my mind, to only two things. Solve interesting problems, lead. That if you can raise a kid who can consistently solve interesting problems, because anything else can be looked up, and who can lead, which requires emotional intelligence and generosity, what else do you need? Because the rest of it can take care of itself. And how do you teach those two things? There are no lectures, they just have to do them. The way you learn to solve interesting problems is by solving interesting problems. The way you learn how to lead is by leading. And, you know, it was a long journey raising my kids and not being a hypocrite, but it was worth every minute of it. That the difference between a kid who learns to use physics and electricity to build a pneumatic potato gun that can shoot a potato 40 miles an hour over the Hudson River is completely different than using physics and electricity to get a B plus on a physics test, right? Because what does F equal MV even mean? MA. What does it even mean? <laughs> I knew it was wrong. I gave credit for that. And so that thinking, your kids are so lucky to have you. And just don't worry about whether or not they can, can conjugate a verb. If it's important enough to them, they'll figure out how to conjugate a verb. But we can't let up on the other two things. They have to be committed to those two things. Thank you. All right, we're going to run the microphone all the way back to here. I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Susie? Susie? Sufi. Sufi's waiting. And then the gentleman in the three-piece suit. Okay, Sufi, how am I doing on time, Brian? We're doing well. Okay, we it's 6.44, and what time are we doing, doing the recording? Uh, we got about 15 more minutes. Till we break? Because uh, you wanted to have some build-up time for uh, the thing. Yeah, so I think we'll break in about 15 minutes. And uh, we'll reset. We'll take a little intermission. Great. And during the intermission, I'm going to sign books yep. or take very quick pictures. OK, go, quick. Hi, um, hi Seth. Hi. Uh, I'm head of product at a social media platform. And uh, I think we all know the feeling of sorting through a bunch of nonsense as we see cultivated perspectives on topics we actually care about. OK. Um, in my industry, it feels like substance sinks to the bottom and yeah. superficiality rises to the top. Easily measured metrics win right. every time. Yeah. Virality over real. Um, I'd like to fix that. And as somebody who shapes products, talking to somebody who I think is emblematic of the kind of content I think should be more findable, what do you wish I could keep in mind as I solve the problem? If we make a list of all of the I'm sure this is the last chapter tech companies that are gone. It is longer than this. That the arrogance that went with these metrics was completely ill-founded because they, were, they established what the scoreboard was, they racked up a big score, and then they disappeared because the scoreboard wasn't the right scoreboard. They weren't keeping track of the right thing. So until you can keep track of the right thing and get enrollment from senior management that that is the right thing, if I could make this number go up, would that be good? If you can go to the shareholders and say, if we can make this number go up, applaud us, then you can do it. But if you can't, it doesn't matter how well-meaning you are, they're going to keep track of something else. And so I have real problems with Google's evolution of the search results pages, because they are washing their hands of their impact on the culture, but they've changed everything because of what pages are getting built and what things people are seeing. But they say it's the algorithm, but it's not the algorithm. You wrote the algorithm. And I know no one understands it anymore, but it could be rewritten. And so we can keep track of something different. So I think you know what I want to keep track of. What I'm really interested not here in real time, but over time to hear from you is, what are you interested in? What's the metric that matters to you? And Facebook has a crisis coming up because they've sold investors on one metric, and now they claim they want a different metric. 
And that's not going to be an easy thing for a public company to do because there are 10 or 20,000 people in the room whose stock options are counting on going up. And when they stop going up, it's going to be really hard to go to a meeting and say, let's do more of that thing that made our stock options go down. And that's what makes companies evil, is Wall Street keeping track of the wrong thing and stock options being on the table. And you say, oh, I got to do it for my kids because that's my job. And then the cultural output 